So at this point in the course, we've learned a few different ways to pass data into components so we can dynamically update the content of the component. But when it comes to the elements template, it's not very flexible. Just like an HTML table allows us to pass an arbitrary HTML into the table cells and rows, we can also pass an arbitrary HTML into our custom Svelte components through the use of slots. Let me show you how. Here, we have a basic modal component with no content in it. It's simply a white card with a black transparent overlay. Now we're importing this component in our layout where we're dynamically displaying it based on the value of show modal, which I've set to be true by default. Now let's say we have two instances where we need to use this modal. The first is to alert the user that there's a sale, and the second is to display a form for them to sign up to a mailing list. We could make two separate modal components, each displaying the appropriate content, but this would mean lots of repeated code. Just like elements can have children, so can components. Since the two modals are nearly identical, there's a lot of code to be shared. Instead, we can pass in the HTML attributes as a child of the component. But before a component can accept children, it needs to know where to put them. We do this with the slot element. So let's add a slot to our modal like this. Now, in our layout, we can add any content we want within our modal tags and it will be inserted into our slot. So for example, let's add the alert by adding a p tag and a button as the children of our modal component like this. Now let's check this out in the browser and we see our modal is displayed with the alert content that we're passing in. Now our modal component can be reused throughout the app displaying unique content each time. We can also add a fallback to our slots. This way, if our modal component is ever left empty, the fallback content will be displayed. We can do this by adding content within our slot tag in our modal component. So let's delete the stuff we're passing into our slot and move into our modal component. And we can add a default P tag that says no content provided and a button to close our modal. Now, if we ever use the modal without passing in children, we'll see this default content instead of a blank white card. So in this example, the component renders a direct child, but sometimes we need more control over placement. For instance, let's say the modal will always have a title, some content, and a button. We can add three different slots, each with their own fallback content, and then we need to add a name parameter to each. Since we have fallback content for each slot, that's what we're seeing now. But in our parent component, we can pass in three children to this component using the provided slot names. And you can see back in our browser, our modal is updated with these three slot sections. In some cases, we may want to control parts of the component based on whether the parent passes in content for a certain slot. So for instance, let's move back into our modal component and remove our header fallback and add our wrapper around our header slot to add padding and a background color like this. Now, if we remove what we're passing into the slot, we see the purple container is visible even though there's no content being passed in. In this case, we want to be able to check if the slot is empty so that we can hide the wrapper. We can check if the slot is empty by checking the properties of the special slots variable. Slots is an object whose keys are the names of the slots passed in by the parent component. If the parent leaves the slot empty, then slots will not have any entry for that slot. In our modal component, we want to use slots to make sure we only render the header container when the parent passes in content for the header slot. We can do that by checking if slots.title has an entry and wrapping our container in an if block like this. Now, the container won't render when the title slot is empty. The last thing I want to cover regarding slots is slot props. There may be a time when you need a slot to track some state and send data back to the parent component in order to update the contents of that slot. For instance, let's say in our modal component, we want to change the button text when it's hovered. To do this, let's create a new variable called hover and toggle it to true on mouse enter and false on mouse leave. Now we want to access the value of hover in our parent component so that we can update the content being passed into the slot. To get this value, we can pass it as a property of the slot, just like how we pass props between components. Now to expose hover to the contents of the modal component, we use the let directive. So in our button slot within the modal component, we can add let colon hover equals hovering. Now the value of hovering will toggle with that of hover from our modal component. This allows us to conditionally display different content in our slot depending on the value of hovering. So I'll go ahead and add an if block to display are you sure you want to close whenever they hover the button. Finally, to test this really works, let's check it out in the browser. Here we see that when we hover on our close button, the text is updated just like we want it to.
So that just about sums up everything related to slots and customizing our Svelte components. In the next video, we're going to spice things up by adding some animations and transitions. I'll see you there.